Okay, one more time. Welcome to the Hawkeye Rising YouTube channel. I am Clint, your host, your ha your Hawkeye. Okay, after a couple attempts, uh, trying something a little different, why don't we jump right in? Thanks for being here. Yeah, what? Technology, technology. Okay. April 19th and April 20th. A recent, uh, a recent brief uh, between with Johnny and, and I, we... Uh, who do we cover? David Jose and um, Stu Peters. This, and th 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 I'm hoping that w I can find this sound bite. The 62nd Congress of the United States, uh, they put it in the Library of Congress, which somebody ripped it out of the book. And uh, you can find it, though, online. You can go look on YouTube, the Jesuit Extreme Oath. And you're going to see where they say in their oath that they will act without conscience. They will uh, infiltrate any nation or church heretical, meaning anything that's not wrong, they will infiltrate. And then they say that they will wage relentless war secretly or openly. And don't they and have a, a history of relentless activity as well? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, let me tell you this. Just so you're... You okay, discussing the, 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 the Jesuit extreme oath or extreme oath of obedience... Of the, so the Jesuit order, there's there's the three, almost if if not every single order, there's the the poverty, chastity, and obedience, and the the extreme oath is the fourth vow, so an ex, extra vow of extreme obedience. Very controversial. Um, there are, you pick your favorite search engine. Do, do do your own search. Uh, some there'll be sites against it, sites uh, that support that are not support it, but um, acknowledge it. But I found um, just br in brief an external. Uh, let's see, an external source. So let's just look at this for for a second. So the the Atlantic, twenty fifteen. An article by Grayson Clary. <laughs> now, who's Grayson Clary? Well, he just so happens to. Let's see. And I, I am sorry that I would I wanted to try sharing. I had issues with screen sharing earlier this evening, and um, it just led to a lot of frustration, and so obviously. I would have much preferred to be able to screen share with you so you can see this yourself. Grace and Clary. So the the author of the of this article I'm going to be sharing with you in brief. So Grace and Clary, a joint assistant professor for the uh, Center of Security Studies. And where is this at? Georgetown University. There will be a surprise outbreak. Given, as you heard from the introduction, that I have been around for a while and have had the opportunity and, and the privilege and the pleasure of serving in five administrations, um, I thought I would bring that perspective to the topic today, is the issue of pandemic uh, preparedness. And if there's one message that I want to leave with you today based on my experience, and you'll see that in a moment, is that there is no question that there will be a challenge to the coming administration in the arena of infectious diseases, both chronic infectious diseases in the sense of already ongoing disease, and we have certainly a large burden of that, but also there will be a surprise outbreak. And I hope by the end of my relatively short presentation, you will understand why. Uh, Grayson Clary is the Stanton Foundation National Security slash Free Press Fellow at the Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press, where he works on issues at the intersection of the national security state and the First Amendment. Before joining the Reporters Committee, he served as a law clerk for the Honorable Merrick B. Garland on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit and a research associate at the Woodrow Wilson Center Center's Digital Futures Project. He has written an 
uh, on issues of national and cybersecurity for the Atlantic Lawfare and War on the Rocks, among other outlets. Clary holds degrees from Yale College and Harvard Law School, where he was a winner of the Sears Prize and an editor of the Harvard Law Review. Okay, let's just briefly look at this article and also noting the publication date of this 2015 article, November 10th. Noting November 10th is Martin Luther's birthday, Pope Paul III's death day anniversary, and the, also noting the it's November 10th, 1775, is the official birthday of the U.S. Marine Corps. Uh, okay, so this article, on several counts, the Jesuits are, an, okay, just in brief, looking at the article from the very top, why sci-fi has so many Catholics. Scientists aren't the only ones who have long been preoccupied with the heavens. So then it gets, and then there's a, there's a picture of Pope St. John Paul II. With a massive satellite dish in the in it's Paul John Paul is in the second is in the foreground. A massive uh, dish is in the background. So speaking at Loyola Un University last month, Brother Guy Co Con Consul Mag Magno S J. <laughs> I have been I recall call him Brother Cosmology. Uh, Consul Mag Magno S J. Recently named the direct director of the Vatican Observatory was enthused. He was lauding the work of the 19th century Jesuit astronomer Angelo Secchi. Uh, particular, particularly the cleric's contribution to spec spectroscopy. Okay, well, fascinating article. I, th I, the intention is not to get bogged down in the weeds. I just wanted to, it, just noting that this article cites loosely. Uh, so, so it, reading from the article on several accounts, the Jesuits are a, are ideal sci-fi fantasy protagonists, mystical, adventurous, scientifically inclined. The society was founded just under 500 years ago by St. Ignatius of Loyola, thanks to its expeditionary spirit and its founder's soldiering past. The Jesuits are some kind, sometimes called God's Marines. A famous fourth vow, above the and beyond poverty, chastity, and obedience, commit some of them to the special obedience to the sovereign pontiff when it comes to missionary work. And jumping down, a number of tin hat types say that John F. Kennedy was a Jesuit puppet, the victim of a Jesuit plot, or both. At times, even the papacy eyed Jesuit power warily. In 1773, Pope Clement the Fourteenth issued an order that the Society of Jesus be extinguished and suppressed, extinguished and, and suppressed. Of course, they bounced back. So that that would have been. Um, July 21st, 1773, uh, and then, of course, they bounced back. That's a August 7th, 1814. But the Jesuits never quite have never quite shaken a reputation for secrecy, mystery, and grand schemes, so that they have a habit of popping up in first contact stories by non-Catholic writers. It's a trope that makes good narrative sense. Who has a, a greater incentive to explore the universe than the, uni the universal church? And speaking of which, what does Catholic mean? I, I really appreciate this. Doc uh, Doc Felipe noted quite some time ago that Catholic is def is Catholic's definition is universal. Back to the article, and who would be the tip of the Catholic spear if not the Jesuits? Okay, where do I go from here? Because this is obviously very loaded. You have oh John F. Kennedy. Eric Triple Seven has a, f a fantastic. It's it is low resolution, but a fantastic video um, where John Fitzgerald Kennedy, um, I operate. Uh, the which year his great speech where he acknowledges a monolith. And no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence 
on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. He said he wanted to see an empire fall. With these guys, he could do it. They speak 30 languages, can hide in plain sight, infiltrate, assassinate, destabilize. They can take a whole country down in one night. You'd never see them coming. And which is this? This is the the, sp the great speech that acknowledged um, and about uh, scattering the CIA and and er, oh, I, uh, this is paraphrasing obviously and um, but it, shattering it and scattering it to the wind. And of course, what uh, what got him slaughtered in broad daylight was it that very statement? Was it the statement of uh, uh, acknowledging secrets and secret? Okay, I also don't want to put words in his mouth. But anyway, I will link that video to John Fitzgerald Kennedy's speech in the description, video description. Uh, let's see. Space and space travel. No, I'd, I'd, I know there's, there's so much. Anyway, what I did want to do go back to is this acknowledgement of the fourth vow. I do further promise and declare that I will have no opinion or will of my own or any mental reservation whatsoever, even as a corpse, but will unhesitatingly obey each and every command that I may receive from my superiors in the militia of the Pope and of Jesus Christ. I furthermore promise and declare that I will wage relentless war secretly or openly against all heretics, Protestants, and liberals to extirpate and exterminate them from the face of the whole earth, and that I will hang, burn, waste, boil, and flay, and strangle and bury alive these infamous heretics, rip up the stomachs of the wombs of their women, and crush their infant heads against the walls in order to annihilate forever their execrable race. And that this, um, and I'll also link this, um, our short brief, <laughs> short, it's 90, 90 minutes, Johnny and I, last, um, last week on April 15th, so the Friday, uh, in dealing with the subject matter of what's, uh, what's in the water. And um, that 47-minute documentary between um, Bri Dr. Brian Artis and Stu Peters. So, uh, f uh, let's see. Okay. So, you have, um, again, uh, David Jose's acknowledgement. Of, uh, just, let's just back that up again. Let's see. They, okay. I they'll provide a solution to bring forth the desired result. So usually they'll come with two solutions that are exactly what they want. So what they'll say is, if you want to get the back to the new normal, everybody got to take a shot in a booster. Well, they know the shot in the booster will kill you. Which is what they right? want. Yeah, so if you look at the 62nd Congress of the United States, uh, they put it in the Library of Congress. With <laughs> they, uh, and then... The fact that he acknowledges, let's see. Which somebody ripped it out of the... That somebody ripped out... So th this there was this entry in the 62nd Congress back in 1913, February 15th, 1913, and th that acknowledged this fourth vow, and it, and uh, apparently it's missing. But you have this, 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 this who is this guy character acknowledging this, comes out of nowhere, acknowledges this, doesn't give a source. Anyway, we cover that. Johnny and I cover this in um, April 15th, and I uh, don't have the title of the, the video off, but again, the, it'll, the link will be in the, descri the description. 
Okay. I don't have the text on me, uh, but John O'Malley, SJ, so uh, Society of Jesus, Jesuit priest John O'Malley, also acknowledges, and I, I bought this book probably about 30 or so times in a row from the library, uh, 2019, 2020, and uh, I, I've yet, I, I'd like to, I'm, I want to get this book from myself. The co- the cover, and I'll put a photo in the um, in this video. The c- the cover, you have Ignatius of Loyola, and at the, at the top the t- the top third and the bottom third you have Pope Francis, also known as or could be known as Francis the first. You have Jesuit Pope Francis, and some time ago. I think it was like a, I think there was a 2018 even email exchange, 2018 2019 email exchange, it, within the team about is Jorge or Pope Francis, the actual black pope or superior Je- Jesuit, superior general of the superior general of the Jesuit order, and there's some going back and forth about this, because uh, the, w- fa- this fascinating time in history where. Is it possible that the the superior general actually emerged himself, emerged and took center stage, as the first Jesuit pope in human history? Of course, it, it can be debated, but the fact is that that still many many what ninety nine point nine percent of the people have never heard the name Arturo Sosa the current Jesuit Superior General. I believe the 31st or 30th... Uh, I know I've got the list. There you are. He is the 31st Jesuit Superior General, Arturo Sosa. That, his full name actually is Arturo Marcelino Sosa Abascal, born November 12, 1948, in Venezuela. Okay, so I wanted to cover a, a, that a couple of seconds of David Jose, John O'Malley. Okay, so then we come to, now I want to get this in proper order, April 19th, April 20. So what's April 19th? April, April 19th, 1540. Sorry, let's try that again. 1540, September 27th, you have the Militante, uh, um, Regimini Militantis Ecclesia by Pope Paul III, pa- uh, an official papal bull sanctioning the Society of Jesus. April 19th, 1541, you have the election of the first superior Jesuit Superior General, Ignatius of Loyola. Loyola was born, well, it's listed, whether it's, again, all these dates, even at that the time, the Gregorian member, the Gregorian calendar wasn't even in existence. That wasn't until um, October fourth, fifteen eighty two. But we have the twenty third of October, fourteen ninety one, as the acknowledged birthday of Ignatius Loyola. Is the first Jesuit superior general. I wanted to get briefly into so <laughs> the bet man. And this, okay, so this is just, again, the Coles notes looking at, uh, our wiki, our good old Vatty or wiki, Wikipedia page. So Batman 2022 American superhero film based on the, the DC comics character Batman produced by Warner Brothers pictures and DC films directed by Matt Reeves, written by Matt Reeves and Peter Craig. Release date in the United States, March 4th, 2022. March 4th. Let's see. Well, first, let's acknowledge in in brief, you have a, a so-called, I've not been able to find a denomination at, 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 to date, but you have Matt Reeves, so he's listed as quote-unquote Christian, Born April 27th, 1966, 
And of course, what share happens to share a birthday, so April 27th, pardon me, uh, with uh, Decimus Junius Brutus Albinus, or otherwise, a Brutus, a two Brute, who plunged a sword into Julius Caesar, Caesar 44 BC. And, uh, and shares also shares a birthday April 27th with Samuel Morse, inventor of the Morse code. It starts to sound Sun Tzuan after after a, after a few more uh, a few more facts here. Beat the warning, the sound of the drums. Set the beacons of fire for the moon. Call to arms all the men far and wide. You have um, Matt Reeves directing Dawn of the Plan Dawn uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, etc. And of course, you have uh, Caesar being this, the uh, one of the main CGI ape characters, and uh, play, and Caesar in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes just happened to be played by Catholic raised Andrew Clement Circus, who was born April twentieth, so his birthday is essentially now or tomorrow. Um, who coincidentally plays Alfred Thaddeus Crane Pennyworth in the Batman? So. Okay, and another film that Reeves had direct has directed has has um is it Let Me In, which was released October first, twenty ten. Uh, in Nova- October first, twenty twenty ten in the US, November fifth, so the Guy Fox Day in the UK. There is a mo- in which this film has a Morse code reference. Um, I've not seen it. Um, you can read about the plot on uh, online, but um, anyway, the fact that you have the Morse code reference, you have the director that shares a birthday with Samuel Morse, the inventor of the Morse code. Okay, back to the Batman. You have a March fourth, March fourth release date. And I'm bringing this up because we just so happen to have two Jesuit superior generals that have a March 4th connection date, March 4th, 1887 date to be exact. You have Peter Jan or Jan Bex, Peter Jan Bex, and Anton Anderledi. Peter ba- uh, Jan Bex was born February 8th, 1795, died March 4th, 1887. And then you have Anton Maria Anderledi, so June 3rd, 1819 to eight, uh, January 18th. <laughs> Fascinating. January 18th, 1892. But Anton, okay, so you have, okay, again, of course, you have the um, generals are, are in office for life once they've been elected. There's some. There's been a hand, less than a handful of exceptions to that. We, that's another. That's another topic. But um, but March fourth. So we have the fact that we have two Jesuit superior generals connected to this date. Uh, let's see. There's even perhaps. There is. I just want to make sure. There's also, well. Okay. Uh, okay, I also want to bring this up because when 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 speaking of dates, re, um, de- release release dates for films, specifically one one example comes to mind very clearly, and that's Quentin Tarantino's Death Proof was released the evening of April sixth, and of course you do the um, you apply the time zone principle, and that would would be a, literally April seventh in Rome. And what death proof? You have the the sim- symbolism brand X, the X, uh, the skull and crossbones, but X for Xavier, Xavier, <laughs> body parts for Xavier. You have a film that um, I've said before. Maybe 
I'll even grab um, brief clips. But it's like, you know what, Hollywood. What does Hollywood, for the women, here's what Hollywood, and I'll, insert, how about this, insert it right here. <laughs> women this is what hollywood thinks of you and then for the men men this is what hollywood thinks of you Okay, so applying, if it's released the evening, then it can be also said that the release date can apply to the next day in our Gregorian calendar. So March 5th, who just happens to have a birthday on March 5th? You have Jesuit Carl Runner, what, what, March 5th, 1904, to March 30th, 1984. Why is March 30th significant as well? Well, you end up having, and it's, I would have thought that the the, pa the passport in the film motif is um, played out from um, the Wachowski brothers. The, so Matrix number one, which uh, you have Thomas Anderson or Neo, Keanu Reeves' character, that, that has September 11th in, the, in his passport. And you also have, just from memory, so there's September 11th, there's a couple of the dates in there um, as well. You also have one of Jason Bourne's passports from the Bourne Identity lists April 19th as, as whether it's a birth, an issue, date, date of issue, date of birth, and then there's the expiry date. So there's three particular dates in every passport. And... Um, Again, just off the top of my head, Jason Bourne, ha ha the fact that he has an April 19th on his passport. And also, too, in... Um, oh, my goodness. Is it the... You have, you have, you have the Bourne... <laughs> oh, my goodness. Why am I'm f now I'm forgetting titles. Okay, it doesn't matter. But the third one, the Bourne Ultimatum, Bourne Supremacy... His dog tags, you have Jason Bourne's dog tags as David Webb lists Roman Catholic as his religion, okay? I don't have the date at the... I wasn't expecting to bring that up, but the fact, Carl Runner, March 5th and March 30th, but back to the passport issue, you have, so the, the antagonist in, um, in the Batman is the Riddler. I've said before, well, in this film... A number of things are going on. It's not about breaking it down and, and, and getting into the film, but I, I'd wanted to bring two or three points up about this film. And Carl Rahner, is, there, there's an important point about Carl Rahner, um, but let's hit this um, the passport point. The Riddler, paid by, um, who is Patrick Parker, has a date of birth of March 30th, 1985, and it expires on March 18th, 2027. I don't recognize these girls. I didn't see them. May I sit down? What do you do in the RV? Answer my question. I sleep there. You sleep in there? You were sleeping out there? Mm -hmm. During the day? Why was the RV parked outside the house? Mm -hmm. I went for a drive. You went for a drive? You weren't driving. I know for a fact those girls were playing outside your RV. You weren't driving. It was parked. Was it a special day? Were you planning on taking two little girls? No. Have you done that before? No. Did he ask him to come inside? No. You ask him to come inside the RV and then you take him away? No. And this, so and the passport's issued March 18th, 20, 2010. It, it's, it's, a, it's very quick in the film. It's actually t t two passports are given. And as a viewer, and I've only seen it once, it was... Um, uh, and thinking that the pa this passport thing is played out, they're not going to put something there. Cord and... 
the Riddler. Date of birth, March 30th, 1985. There's an expiry date of March 18th, 2027. And the issue date is March 18th, 2010. So you have the release date of this film. Again, back to Jesuit fingerprints on this film that just dates alone by a director that has a connection to Morse code. Okay. Okay, hold on. Sometimes I got to wear these when I'm working with this camera. <laughs> Not doing an eye of horse thing. Okay. She has a birthday. Okay, and um, with Samuel Morse has is, is used films um, or M Morse code in a particular film, Let Me In. Film about, a, I don't know, like <laughs> about a bloodbath, uh, a supernatural thriller. Uh, what else? So, Call Runner, Call Runner. With um, with a young uh, Joseph Ratzinger, who w would be w would become Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, were behind the Second Vatican Council. Okay, I'm just gonna qu quickly look that up. Vatican II, which took place uh, each uh, between 1962 and 1965. Preparation for the council took three years, from the summer of 59 to the autumn of 1962. The council was opened on October 11th, 1962, by John the 23rd, Pope John the 23rd. Pope, during uh, the preparation first session, he I believe he died, and his uh, during and his um, successor. Interestingly enough, his papacy began October 28th. 1958, October 28th is there. That's a. You have a Bill Gates birthday. You have a. Um, Jonas Salk birthday. I believe it's a um, third Jesuit Superior General. Feast day, Francis Borgia. I do. Oh, okay, I, I. Okay, I'm not going to spend time looking for this right now, but. Um, I would like to f obviously a, fi a, 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 a solid a ci citation because this is from memory from I believe um, from uh, pr Professor Veith about Karl Rahner and um, Benedict the Sixteenth before he was Benedict so Joseph Ratzinger behind Vatican II and that's important okay first let's um. When the Council of Trent occurred, it was controlled by the Jesuits. Yes. How about the Vatican II. Is now, there a connection there? yes, the connection is very, very, very prophetical. I will say uh, this. Uh, I think that uh, will clear the whole uh, point here, because it's so prophetical that while the Council of Trent was the first consul to be managed by the Jesuit order, the Vatican Council was brought about by the same Jesuit order with the same intention. And you know the intention of the Council of Trent. The intention behind the Council of Trent was the Counter-Reformation. What was the intent of the Vatican Council II? Another Counter-Reformation, but called today, how you call it? Renewal. You see the point? Now, the change was a name, but the intentions were the same. Yes. See, more sophisticated today. Yes. You see, the Counter-Reformation was taken through the uh, to the Council of Trent. That was the entire Counter Reformation was uh, performed by the Council of Trent decrees. Then, through that time until today, Vatican Council II came about with the idea of renewal. That means another a step forward and the final. I will say this is the final stage of a Counter Reformation. Why is this important? Because there is a scene, a significant scene in the Batman where um, Robert Pattinson is the Batman is working out the, off the, th by the Riddler uh, and the riddles, the plot, who, what, where, when, why, how, what's, who's next, where all these, um, the clues and such. But there's, there's a scene where he pushes a massive table out of the way and Pattinson is, as Batman or as Bruce Wayne is shirtless and is standing in the middle of a room on a question mark and there just so happens to be 
four particular symbols surrounding him. Now, some may call these the cross of Lorraine, some may call these the cross of Anjou, but this, this cross is also noted or, or um, referenced as the patriarchal cross. And what do we know about the patriarchal cross? The, the patriarchal cross is a variant of the Christian cross, the religious symbol of Christianity, also known as the cross of Lorraine. It's similar to the, uh, uh, similar to the familiar Latin cross, Check, check. Okay, Patriarchal Cross. You have the um, February 1st, the Chinese New Year. Remember uh, Google, which who has the same birthday as the Jesuit Order, September 27th, published a, a, a GIF about the Chinese New Year with the tiger. It is, we are now in the year of the tiger. And it had this particular cross upon its forehead. So uh, an upright with uh, two even cross beams And then as we know, uh, let's see, if we know anything about China, and if we know anything about the Jesuit order, where did the Jesuits go right after Regime de Militantes Ecclesia? Well, India, Japan, and China. And let's look at Matteo Ricci briefly. So you have... Um, from 1552 to 1610, so his, his birthday, October 6th, 1552 to May 11th, 1610, Matteo Ricci was a missionary to China who brought his mathematical and astronomical knowledge to China and adapted to Chinese culture. Matteo entered the Society of Jesus in 1571. In uh, entering China in 1583, Ricci dressed first in the clothing of a Buddhist monk and then later as a Confucian Mandarin. Ricci's aim was to adapt the custom, the customs of China to be more accessible. Uh, he, Ricci also brought with him Western clocks, musical instruments, instrument, instruments, math, mathematical and astronomical uh, instruments, and cosmological, geographical, and architectural work, works with maps and diagrams. Point is, who gave China their calendar? You, the gold star answer, Matteo Ricci, S.J., Jesuit order. Who owns China right now? Remember, China has been infiltrated since the, the moment Matteo Ricci set foot inside its boundaries. Okay. That can be... Uh, Okay, why did I... Now I'm jumping <laughs> jumping around too much. Okay, and Bat back to Batman, the patriarchal cross. You have... Okay, the point is what I wanted to bring up. Okay, so b the fact that you have... There's the connections of the dates, the connections through the director, the connections through the themes, symbols, and motifs, uh, motifs in the film... Even I had brought up briefly in one of our um, our recent briefs uh, with, with Johnny about even the um, the bat symbol. I thought about this recently, I, and I believe because the the Batman is is an allegory and allusion to the Jesuit Superior General. The bat symbol projected into the sky is the is the inversion of Daniel seven and. Um, Matthew's reference, uh, uh, Matt, no, Jesus, Jesus's reference of Daniel seven, in Matthew twenty six sixty four, where the high, high priest is asking Jesus about his identity, and what and what does Jesus declare that you'll see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven, and the high priest. There's the argument that many. Nobody understood what Jesus was was proclaiming, and you have the uh, the high priest ripping his clothes, r rending his garments. The high priest knew what he was he was doing because it, I think in in the Levitical law, uh, he could only he could only tear his garments in response to blasphemy. I don't have a citation for that, but. That can be discussed at another point. I'm just that's just from memory. Okay, 
uh, symbol in the sky. Now, the reason I feel like I'm rushed is because I'm recording. I'm go cycling through three bat three batteries that have run down, and I don't want my camera to turn off one more time. It's already done it many times. Um, okay, we have a, a Vatican Council reference because of Karl Rahner uh, through the Batman. Uh, through the release date and also the passport of the Riddler. It's like we're, we're given literally given given these clues as riddles for us to figure out, which is fine. It is what it is, but even just s s signs and symbols. When you see a, a scene a s a sp specifically, and this isn't about spoilers. I'm sorry if this if you've not seen this. There's this there's this point where yes, ba um, Bruce Wayne is Batman. Okay, how much do I want to say? There's this his character arc. He has this complete transformation as a result of something that. If pointed out that the final scenes help complete Batman's arc. Throughout the Batman, the titular hero often comes off more like a movie monster than a superhero. Batman is obsessed with the Gotham Project, and as Bella Real observes, isn't doing much to help the population when he's Bruce Wayne. You really could be doing more for this city. Your family has a history of philanthropy, but as far as I can tell, you're not doing anything. Does, um, and it uses the vengeance word. And that's something that uh, when when Batman has been asked about his identity or who he is throughout the film, his response, his co co common response is, I'm vengeance. And then he hears that coming from somebody whom he's fighting and that ch change, uh, th there's a transformation in Batman and his, his transformation also fo is followed by how he relates to people and also becomes a, a type of savior for people and particularly the scene where he falls into water lights a um after being electrocuted and also and then lights a um flare and leads free frees a number of people who are who are um who are bound by fall, fallen debris and leads them through the water now if uh, if I remember, I will in this point back to St. Peter's Square, where you have the the eight pointed star, the mark of Cain. The man upon the the, the altar, you have the fa the phallus, and then on the phallus is the. Sorry, bumping the mic. You have the cross, topping the phallus of Nimrod. You and. I believe in part. That symbol is the the bird's eye view of the fascists. Okay, so the uh, b rods lashed and bundled around a central article of war, in which Tupper Saucy says the fascists represents the Jesuit superior general. And now I, I I may do be doing this poorly. Because of I've got all these distractions, I'm trying to fight uh, my camera turning off again. I've had issues um, with even screen sharing, which I would have done this com com in a completely different um, format earlier. That wasn't working anyway. But it's uh, so I feel like yes, I'm r r laying this out poorly. But I'm hoping okay, if you've come this far, you're, you're get getting getting. <laughs> We're jumping across the river over, hopefully these stones are being laid out so, okay, you can cross this with me in a way. The fact that you have, literally, you have Batman is this Jesuit superior general. And you have his representation, the ideology, the who and what he is leading, leading what was before the flood. So the golden age, the age where gods walk with men. You have the age where, yes, there was the Watchers that had sex with women, that sired Nephilim. There was the death of the Nephilim. The, the, the Watchers were judged and put into Tartarus. Where did Jesus go Where he died, when he died for three days and three nights? First, there's a verse in First and Second Peter that, that, uh, that tell you exactly where Jesus went. But you have this period... 
leading up to the flood. You know, J- J- there's a ref- there's subtle references in Jasher, the book of Jasher, and also the book of Jubilees, what where men provoked Yahuwah, Yahweh by blending and mixing kinds, injuring animals inj- and blended kinds. I'll just, okay, I'll add this, Sodom and Gomorrah. Was that man's, it, 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 it wasn't about homosexuality. That's certainly part of it. But what's the context? Genesis 19. That's only, well, not even 12, like essentially 12 chapters away from Genesis 6. When, <laughs> where men sought to have sex with angels. This is not about homosexuality in our understanding. I believe that what, what men were trying to do was, was rein, not even reinstate, but re- recreate what ha- happened before the flood. And of course, it, didn't ha- it, it, it couldn't happen because... Okay, we don't need to go down that. But I just wanted to say that. That is important because that does not get covered and i think there's something there and it's a, it's i think it's a goal it's in part a gold mine because it's it's back to we don't just focus on genesis 6 and the nephilim again m- ministries have been bought and have been th- th- there have men that have been running with th- their message for year, years now uh, and and it's been the same without changing and yet none of them have ever mentioned rome never mentioned vatican never mentioned Jes- jesuit Rome, the fourth and final beast. What about the office of the papacy being the little horn power that emerged from the ten horns? No, it's it's just fixated on Genesis 6, 1 through 4. And then surrounding verses, yes. Okay, back to Batman. Batman in the water. You literally have the, the, the Batman being the central instrument of war in the fascists. Okay, how are we doing? Okay, uh, Patriarchal Cross. I also want to point out the Je- um, the Jesuit order, Jean de Brébeuf, and uh, it's also noted the cross of Lorraine, the cross of Anjou, was a symbol that the, that the first Jesuits who came to North America carried. So not, not necessarily the, the, the images that we um, are familiar with, with just the, the classic or standard cross, or even crucifix. But they bore the symbol of the patriarchal cross. Okay. Uh, bring out the gimp, I ha- and I have to hit this again because I've missed. I wrote myself a note, and I've I've missed it many many times. Bring out the gimp. Back to Pulp Fiction, nineteen ninety four, released October fourteenth. Uh, you so October fourteenth, of course, being the, I've mentioned this before, being the significant date, uh, even the point. Yes, twenty sixteen, being a number of years later, where Arturo Sosa began his superior generalate for the Society of Jesus, but there's still that connection because in this film, in this in this bring out the gimp scene, the pawn shop scene, and everything that happens for this what ten minute period, you're also through the through clocks and the symbols. You're given April 19th and April 20th, specifically on the large clocks on the wall that Bruce Willis as um, Butch Coolidge, Coolidge, as he descends the stairs with the short sword unsheathed to rescue Marcellus Wallace, a large black man in an orange shirt, being bound and buggered by Zed. Again, it's, it's disgusting. Okay, the gimp. Bring out the gimp. Ignatius Loyola, wounded in battle, May 20th, 1521, by Cannonball. Apparently had had to limp the rest of his life. You literally have 5th Jesuit Superior General Claudio, Claudio Aquaviva. I call him Claudio Living Waters Aquaviva because I believe not only was he Shakespeare, but he... Uh, is the is the is essentially 
is the author of the King James Bible. Yes, is that a little grandiose, a little grand statement? Sure. Can I support that? Not at the moment. But there surely is evidence, like whether applying the Sun Tzu principle, where Sun Tzu is not actually a Chinese general of old, but the but the the voice of 18th Jesuit Superior General Lorenzo Ricci through Jean Joseph Marie Emiot in 1772, and the publishing of Sun Tzu's uh, Art of War or Thirteen Articles. Back to Claudio, Claudio Aquaviva. Claudio literally is translated as lame. Let's think about that. My point, my point and contention is bring out this, bring out the gimp scene is the, is the allegory of what happened to Canada. What would become Canada? Yes, the United States too, but specifically Canada and the blood that... <laughs> Huh. Can there be truth without, let's say that again, can there be reconciliation without truth? And the truth is not known, the truth is not being spoken. And what happened at the end of March, ending on April April 1st in uh, in Rome at the Vatican, was, a, I believe, a, an open mockery, open mockery to the Canadian indigenous. And it, And nobody knows it. And why do I bring that up? As I started with this uh, br- this broadcast, you have the February fifteenth, nineteen thirteen date, that of the um, the acknowledgement of the um, the Jesuit fourth vow in the sixty second Congress, and the fact that uh, just like uh, David Jose mentions that it's ripped out. What what else happened on February fifteenth? A number of years later, how about 1965, the Canadian flag? Okay, but it isn't instituted and or had it had its in, 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 official inauguration until 15 February 15th, 1965. Okay. Now, th- there are m- multiple sources that I'll t- that there's t- two men's names when you when you look up when you look up when you look up the flag. The Canadian flag, and one is John Ross Matheson, a Freemason, or George Francis Gilman Stanley. And I've not been able to find a lot about George Francis Gilman Stanley. Try to find a Jesuit in his woodpile, I haven't found it yet. But the fact that he has Francis in his name. Okay, so you have these two men connected with the Canadian flag, the, f- the flag, the ensign that we know today, the uh, the red and white. Ma- as a born again Christian, who knows and understands that Rome is the fourth and final beast of Daniel in Revelation, I know my history, I know my Canadian history. I am still a student. I'm not an, a, a definitive authority yet. But I know my I know my stuff. I know my shit. I'm getting there. And I can tell you, as I look at this, I love my country. I wanted to compete for her. I wanted to wear <laughs> the maple leaf on my back as an athlete previously in my life. But I just I just need to say I love my country. But I believe this flag is 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 a is a symbolic Masonic apron, and what is it? What is an apron? And well, it's just like what did Adam and Eve do when um, when they had their realization of their nakedness? They covered themselves with themselves with leaves. These are the first aprons. It's the Canadian flag. It is a Masonic apron. And the red is the symbolic blood shed on this land of the indigenous. The children, the young men, the young women who've been raped, who've been buggered, who've been absolutely screwed by Rome. 
by her nuns, by her priests, priests being male brides who've taken the oath of, of chastity, poverty, and obedience. And again, I've, as I said it before, the rule is abuse. It is not the exception. I'll say it again. The Canadian flag, th- because of its Freemasonic uh, connection, and free, uh, if knowing and understanding Freemasonry, the G meaning uh, is G means Jesu, is a reference in the in the Freemasonic symbol in the the compass and square. It is a reference to the Jesuit Superior General, the unknown superior. The Canadian flag is a Freemasonic apron that covers the loins, and it is soaked with the blood of the innocent. It is soaked with the blood of children. That is the red that you see. That is the red that we see and acknowledge. That's the red, the blood that we raised up not too long ago and cried out for freedom. The God, Literally, the goddess freedom, without even knowing that. Libertas, freedom. Okay, so why am I bringing this? Oh, boy. Okay, why am I bringing this up? April 19th. Jesuit Superior General, election date, April 20th. And I believe in also, Jacques Cartier departed from St. Malo, Brittany in 1534, his first voyage from Europe to what would become North America and what would become Canada. He's also known as the father of Canada. He was French Roman Catholic. And as I said before, the... the <laughs> The fleur de lis, the fleur de lis being a symbol, not just an a Gnostic symbol of, of sexual union, but in, in within it is the symbol of the Os- Osiren cap, even the let's call it the, the mitre cap, the symbol of penetration. And what did he declare that you can easily find in the history books when he laid his eyes on the North American shores inside the Gulf of St. Lawrence? This looks like the land that God gave to Cain. Who has bestowed the mark of Cain? November 3rd, 1534. Henry VIII, through his acts of supremacy, broke from Rome. Yes, there's a, there's a, there's a complete narrative laid out for that. There's merit to it, but there's this underlying condition. And that the plausible deniability, the Church of the Eng- England, Ang- Anglicanism, that supposedly broke from Rome, but didn't, but did, but didn't. <laughs> so you have these two, these multiple meaning, meaningful dates in in fifteen thirty four. Yes, the age of exploration was in a way underway, but April twentieth is the date that the beasts out of the sea, began its way, making its way over to what would become the beast out of the earth, essentially the United States of America, and in part Canada by its close proximity. Revelation 13, the United States of America is the beast out of the earth. The beast out of the sea is Rome and the old world. The office of the the papacy is Antichrist. If you're not familiar with this, you've got homework to do. If you, as a historian, and especially if you are, or call yourself a Christian, it's embarrassing to hear learned men, women, say that Canada was founded on Judeo-Christian principles. Bullshit. It was founded on the Jesuit, Jesuit, Jesuitical deception and Roman Catholicism, which is an insurgency. Lit and it, it, and I agree with the captain. A war crime. Look at the fruit. There's two points in Revelation. I don't have the, the the addresses off by heart, but there are two points that that state that uh, 
what comes out of the Messiah's mouth. It's a sword. Our final act of resistance, rebellion, strength might actually just end up being speech. If you don't know your history, this is not going to make sense. If you don't know your history, you know the saying, you're doomed to repeat it. How about this? Let's then let's let's jump to this before just to, before we wrap up very quickly. If you have given your children over to the system, and let's say that to, by by getting them either by mast and also the snake bite, you have done what the first people did with the residential schools. Children were not taken from homes in the beginning; they were willingly given over to Rome by their parents. Let that sink in. Have you given your child over to Rome? There's a possibility and chance to turn it around. But first, there's the, the waking up process. That's probably a lot for right now. Personal responsibility. Okay. How's your water? I don't, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm. 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 It's just. It's beyond just. It being irritated. Yes, I have hope. Yes, I have a, a, a strength. Yes, I have. But I'm. I'm t- man, this pisses me off. That that that. It, well, here you go. Is this is this one of the match in part, and then with the with the with the Sarucci team, and uh, what a magnificent <laughs> group of of gentlemen. What an amazing group of gentlemen. And it's amazing that wh- where, when we do get together, how we we laugh, what we laugh at, because this is this is no laughing matter. This is not subject matter. That that is that is. Anyway, okay. Before uh, before this one runs out, I'll sign off. Thank you so much for being here. And it is it, as a watchman, as a messenger. It, I'm motivated by, by love. I'm motivated by love. And not mine, because I'd rather be doing something else as well. This is not my forte. I don't speak well. I don't like speaking. <laughs> okay, whatever. I'm not even going to get into that. Let's just uh, let's wrap it up. Anyway, thank you. So uh, April 19th, April 20th, you have the the um, Jesuit Superior General date, the 19th and the 20th, the beginning of the beast out of the sea through Jacques Cartier, who was called and named the father of Canada. Okay. Yes. Not not the Jesuits that, that appear to be pushing for the Sunday, for National Sunday Law. Yes. Actually, actually, this is to trigger a reaction to really uh, make you for a cover-up. The issue in prophecy is more than a day, is more than a day. The issue in prophecy is who and where is the Antichrist now. Once that the person perceives the reality and the manifestation of this prophecy, they'll know the rest according to the scripture. But when a person is blind to the reality of who the Pope is, and the Pope is granting every favor to every other denomination. They'll believe that the Pope is not such a bad guy at all, after all.